All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is uh, This Kingdom Monera. All right, so let's look into it. So first of all, prokaryotic, what that means uh, compared to the eukaryotic protus, these ones are, so they don't have the mitochondria, they don't have the chloroplasts, they don't have a few other things. Um, they're fairly primitive, which means that they're complexity, uh, and they're very small, obviously. They're smaller than our cells and plant cells. And then the one key characteristic here, too, is that they can li exist as unicells or colonies, so bunches of cells together. And then they have two options. They can either be heterotrophic, which means that they have to gather their own food, or autotrophic, which means that they can synthesize their own food, and we'll get into this in a little bit. So you might need to pause that to re record it all. Uh, it's mostly heterotrophic. And here are the three types that you guys are going to need to know. So caucus, which means spheres. So this is the shapes. Bacillus, which is the rods. And then finally, spirillum, which is the curves or the little spiral-shaped bacteria. Okay. So let's look at some of the arrangements. So if you have them by themselves, they're called solitary, not that tricky. If they're together, it's called diplo. If it's in chains, it's called strepto. Staphylo is in clusters, and finally, uh, sarcina is if there's fours or eights groups. Let's look at the general structure, and you will need to know this. So as you can see, that there's there's no nucleus, but what there is is DNA that's in the middle, but it's not organized into a member. It's not surrounded by a membrane, so it's not called a nucleus. So what they do have that's similar to the other cells is ribosomes, and we remember that ribosomes produce our proteins. Uh, they don't have a membrane either. So you can see that there's no uh, mitochondria, there's no lysosomes, there's no other things that have uh, membrane-bound organelles. Here is a plasma membrane, which allows things to come out, in and out. And just like the plant cell, it also has a cell wall, and we'll talk about the structure of that in a few minutes. It also has these things called flagellum, which help with movement. And then a pilus, same thing, these little hair-like structures. Cell wall composition, we have this really weird word which is called peptidoglycan. And all that means is that it's carbohydrate, which is this right here. So it's called a polysaccharide. And what it does, though, is it's cross-linked with these things that are peptides. That's where you get the pepto, or pepti, and then the glycan is this um, polysaccharide. Okay, And what that does is it gives some structure to the cell wall of the bacteria. First of all, we have two types of bacteria, and we're going to do a lab on this in a few few days. And we have things called gram-positive or gram-negative bacteria. And the gram-positive just means that it has a lot or many layers of the peptidoglycan. And what happens when we put this stain called crystal violet, it gets absorbed and it stains purple. And that's in contrast, so this would be gram-positive. This is gram negative because when we have that stain, it doesn't absorb. And it's because the peptidoglycan is a little bit thinner, fewer layers, but it's surrounded by a second layer, which is a fat layer. We call that a lipid. So this lipid layer does not allow this crystal violet stain to be absorbed. So when we're looking at uh, bacteria under the microscope, which we're going to do, we can figure out if it's gram positive or gram negative by adding this crystal violet stain. All right, so penicillin, which is not a bacteria, make sure everybody's clear on that, it comes from a fungus. So it's a chemical extract that they noticed that when this fungus was growing is that other bacteria wouldn't grow around it. And it's because of this penicillin compound that was ex excreted from the penicillium fungus. So why that's important is it's an antibiotic, as we know. When we're sick, when we have a bacterial infection, we take penicillin because it will kill... Uh, these bacterial cells because what it does is it breaks uh, the cross-link, the peptide bonds, in this peptidoglycan. Kills this gram-positive. How does it reproduce? So this is an important one here. So asexual, we have things called binary fission. We're going to do this a lot in class. So binary fission is where you have one bacterium. What happens is that the DNA inside doubles and then it breaks apart into two. So it's pretty simple. Positive thing, you don't need a mate. It's just by yourself reproducing into two. Uh, and the other things we can talk about spores in a second. Don't write that part down. We'll get to the endospores in a minute. Sexual reproduction, it's called conjugation. This is where we have two bacteria that join together. The big advantage here 
is you can have genetic variety. So you're combining genes from two different organisms. So if one is antibiotic resistant to penicillin, it reproduces with another one. Now they're both antibiotic resistant penicillin. Very positive for them, pretty big negative for us. So what happens is we go through this. So you're going to want to copy this little diagram down. So pause it for a second. So this is called a plasmid. It's a little piece of the DNA that gets transferred uh, from one bacteria to the next. How they get their nutrition, as we know, there's the two, part, two different types, heterotrophic and autotrophic. Uh, heterotrophics, aerobic means that it has to, so it can't break down its food unless it has oxygen. Listen to that, and anaerobic means that it cannot, okay, so big difference. Obligate means like it's obligated, it has to, and anaerobic means no oxygen, aerobic means that it uses oxygen, so this means it cannot grow in oxygen. And the last one is um, facultative anaerobes, and this can grow in either. Either it can use O2 or not. So if there's O2 present, it uses a certain way to get its food, and otherwise, if it doesn't, it uses another one called, well, we'll say it's called fermentation, but you don't really need to know that. It's just something that you might see later. Autotrophics, the two that we know already, photosynthetic. This is called anabania, and what it is, it's a photosynthetic bacteria. We call it a cyano. It uses photosynthesis to attain its own food. And then we also have chemosynthesis. So as you can see here, if I these are these sulfur clouds, these hydrothermal vents deep under the sea. And what it does is it's letting go of all this energy and this sulfur-based chemicals. And the bacteria can use that sulfur-based chemical to produce its own energy. Endospores, as I said, it is, is there's a tough coat that can form around here. So if this is a regular bacteria cell, Unfortunately, bad conditions can arise, and so what happens is this tough outer coat surrounds the DNA, and what it does is it eventually, everything else breaks down, and now all you have is this tough outer coat around the DNA. And what it does is it remains dormant or kind of sleeping until more favorable conditions arise, and then it can start growing again. Okay, uh, is that it produces vitamin K. So in your E. coli, which is in our gut, our large intestine, produces vitamin K, which we need for our diet. Then the big one for us in terms of financial is we use bacteria a lot in food for yogurts, for cheeses, uh, all sorts of other things here. This is a bacterial-based food product. And the last one is for certain plants. Um, it's able to fix nitrogen, which means that uh, atmospheric nitrogen, N2, can't use can't be used by plants and so it changes it into a nitrogen based compound that plants can actually use because they need it in order to synthesize things like amino acids and proteins. Combinant DNA, this is a big one, they use bacteria in order to do this so we, they can introduce new genes into an organism uh, using bacteria and this recombinant DNA technology. So the big thing for you guys to know here, the big thing for you guys to know here is just the different shapes how it attains its nutrients, so that means, you know, uh, anaerobic, aerobic, um, facultative, or obligate, and then also how it reproduces. So if you can do that, you're set to go. This is